So not only does the wireless WAN provide communication to the substation, inside the substation, and from the substation, it also provides the ability to bridge into the neighborhood area network. And so what we have in this slide is on the bottom right, that WAN NAN bridge is an extender that provides the both the communications to the wireless WAN as well as an AMI collector in blue that starts to the NAN network for all the RF mesh to the meters on the homes and businesses. And so what you see here is a small neighborhood with meters to the homes that are all connected in an RF mesh to the NAN that's backhauled across the wireless WAN communications network. Now, with a integrated WAN-NAN bridge, the AMI network now has a completely private backhaul network for metering traffic. This provides a couple of benefits. First, it eliminates the monthly recurring OPEX fees associated with cellular. So with a private network, there are no monthly fees. But it also provides utilities with the ability to completely manage and control that WAN tier with quality of service and with security and with broadband connectivity. Utility also has the control of an encryption and virtual private networking throughout the private wireless WAN backhaul with a self-healing, fault-tolerant, and redundant mesh network. Now, this also provides utilities with a great deal of flexibility. So the NAN network can be deployed wherever and whenever required. So whether this is in dense urban areas or in rural areas, that long-range backhaul can extend out where service is required. Now, the wireless WAN, of course, is integrated in Trillion's multi-tier architecture, but the wireless WAN can also work with other AMI systems for a private network backhaul. This same wireless WAN can now also enable microgrids. So this slide shows an industrial park that has distributed generation, solar panels on top of a building, sub-metering applications, and reclosers, which allow the utility to provide the microgrid with the capability of islanding that microgrid from the rest of the network. And the final component of the wireless WAN is the ability to provide distribution networking. And with distribution networking, we're really talking about distribution automation. Now, the wireless WAN does not provide distribution automation. It provides the network for distribution automation. And we end up partnering with a whole variety of distribution automation vendors like ABB, Cooper, and Telvent who provide that solution. So the wireless WAN is a pipe that provides connectivity to devices to enable distribution automation. With this network, you can now provide transformer monitoring, integrated volt bar control with connectivity to voltage regulators and, and cap banks, as well as feeder reconfiguration. And I'll give an example of feeder reconfiguration. So in this example, we have in white two feeders, one coming from the top substation that has a gateway installed and fiber backhaul, and the other on the right in green with lease line. So we have or with former lease line that's now connected with an extender. So these two feeders are connected through a normally open switch and with communications out to the reclosers and the capacitor banks and the voltage regulators and the switches allows the utility to provide feeder reconfiguration. So with communications to the reclosers and switches, it now provides the ability to provide feeder reconfiguration. So this example here on the top left, the normal state has that switch open and substation one and substation two providing power through two different feeders. When a fault occurs on the top right, what the utilities can now do, they have the ability of controlling the reclosers and switches. So on the bottom right, the first communication would be to recloser one, to open up, which isolates that fault. And then on the bottom left, the next step is to communicate with the switch and close that circuit, which restores power to a section of the grid. So with communications 
throughout the distribution devices provides the utilities with the ability to reconfigure that feeder, restore power to a portion of these consumers, isolate the fault, and then act accordingly. So with WAN communications throughout distribution and substations, it starts to enable a new series of applications for the smart grid. It allows the communication and connectivity to all substations to enable SCADA. It allows the connectivity to distribution devices to extend head-end distribution management systems to the distribution grid. The net result, of course, here is the focus on substation and distribution automation with the ability also of providing AMI backhaul. Now, it's important to note that not only does this provide broadband, long-range, low-latency communications throughout the distribution grid, but it also can do this with total security and quality of service. Now, quality of service and security is part of the next webinar we're going to be doing on application domain partitioning, and we invite you to join that webinar as well.